Chapter 791 Empirical Sort Qin Xian let loose a flurry of attacks towards Han Sen, who remained in a defensive position, allowing her to do as she could. He was able to block each and every strike. The Dong Xian aura allowed him to sense all things, but Han Sen had previously stuck to only using it to observe life forces. As he shifted his focus on the skill, it began to feel more and more like the eighth sense. Hansen used his feelings to block Qin Xian's attacks and did not actually watch her with open eyes. The more he practiced, the greater his abilities of perception became. It wasn't quite on par with the eighth sense yet, but he wanted to get it there. Although fighting with others was a fine aid for practicing, Hansen soon discovered it was difficult for him to trace the attacks of others in the virtual community. While the virtual community felt real enough, everyone was just data. They weren't inhabiting a physical space, and as such, it was difficult for Han Sen to learn exactly what he needed. Most of the time, he was just guessing where to deflect. In these conditions, I can still predict the attacks of an opponent. This means I have been successful on the whole. Han Sen was not a person who shied away from difficult tasks. Instead, the prospect of performing something tough and then coming out on top excited him. When they first started practicing together, Hansen used his vision as a secondary support to completely block her attacks. The longer he practiced, the more he could lax on his need for vision and rely solely on perception without eyes. Although progress was slow, even a tiny bit was enough to bring Hansen much joy. As for Qin Xin, she was holding back when she attacked during the early stages of their practice. It was only as time went on that she noticed her inability to deal any damage to her sparring partner. No matter what attack she performed, Hansen seemed able to block it flawlessly. When she noticed his unwillingness to fight back, she realized she had no need to hold back. Then, she committed all her focus and power into attacking without restraint. Despite her best efforts, she could not break or bypass his guard. Coach, will you be here again tomorrow? Qin Xian asked Hansen when she had to leave. Yes, I'll be visiting here for a while to come, Hansen answered, with certainty. Until his Dong Shin aura was as efficient as his eighth sense, he wasn't going to return to the sanctuary. When Qin Xian received this answer, she looked incredibly happy. After leaving the virtual training camp, she returned to her room and brought out a hypergeno art. The hypergeno art was titled Empirical Sword. This skill was focused purely on attack and saved nothing for defense. It was extremely powerful but also extremely risky to perform during the heat of battle. The Qin family had been in possession of the skill since ancient times, but due to the risk involved in its usage, few bothered learning it. Once you committed to this strike, there was no going back. If your attack was ineffective, and the opponent on the receiving end was able to fight back, you'd most likely end up dead. In the ancestral book of their lineage, many family members were recorded to have died while using empirical sword. The Qin family did have many other powerful skills, however. She didn't have to only use empirical sword, and adding to that, she had not spent any time learning it before. But she thought of giving it a go while going up against an opponent who never attacked back. Han Senator Qin Xian could not once break his guard, so she thought of using this skill to surprise him. Gaining some casual experience and practice with the skill could only be a boon for her, as well. Qin Xian then took to learning it and the next day when she and Hansen fought, it surprised him a lot. Her intimidating approach was vastly different than it had been the day before, which excited him, too. After Qin Xian used Empirical Sword, she realized she quite liked it. So, she dedicated more time and research into its intricacies. After doing a deep dive to learn it better and better, she became very proficient with it. This excited her a lot, but the grief-driven history of the skill ever gnawed at her mind. Are you okay? While Hansen battled with Qin Xin in a merry mood, her talent with the new skill only continued to improve. This was good for him, as the added pressure forced him to get better and better. It was exactly what Hansen needed, but before long, he noticed Qin Xin withdrawing a little bit. The zest and intimidating momentum she wielded at the beginning of the day's session had all disappeared. Coach, this sword skill can only strike. There is no defense at all. I fear that it is too risky, and I should hold back from learning more of it. When Qin Xian looked at Han Sen, she appeared to be lost. It was obvious how much she sought and valued advice from him. What is the skill called? Han Sen asked. Empirical sword. Qin Xian did not hide this and told him directly. 
The power of grand empires is to secure victory without bloodshed. Their presence compels obedience. When your sword skills reach a level that does not require battle, then you will have truly learned it. If you never have to fight, then there is no risk, Hansen slowly said. Not fight? Qin Xian looked at Han Sr. Yes. To not have to do battle is to reach a zenith of your being. Hansen nodded, and then continued to say, We will stop here for now, while you mull my words over for a time. Listen to what your heart tells you. If you want to learn it, continue. If you harbor doubt, then give it up now. You cannot be half and half with this skill. It will get you killed, if so. Thank you, coach. I will indeed think this over. Qin Xian left the virtual training camp, deep in thought over what Hansen had told her. Qin Xian thought things over for a long time, and her mind was racked with indecision. Eventually, she reached out to call someone else. On her communicator, the image of an old man appeared on screen. Little Xin Xian, you have actually reached out to me. Tis a rare happenstance. The old man sipped tea as a certain of bitterness tinged his words. Great grandfather, I want to practice empirical sword, Qin Xin said, with seriousness in her voice. The old man's head shook, and he looked back with seriousness, too. He observed his great granddaughter for a while and eventually asked, Tell me why you seek to practice it. Qin Xin told him what had been happening, and then she said, So, after much consideration, I wish to learn it. And I want to reach a level where fighting will never be necessary. To not fight is the great oppression, and I have much interest in meeting this person you speak so fondly of, the old man said, instead of answering Qin Xian directly. Great grandpa, if you would like to meet him, that can be arranged for tomorrow in the virtual training camp. But tell me, should I learn empirical sword? Qin Xian asked with a girly -o voice. She barely showed her more ladylike side to anyone, not even her parents. She would only do it before her great-grandfather. Don't you have the answer, residing deep in your heart? For what purpose are you asking this old man? The old man laughed and continued to say, Remember to call me tomorrow, so that I can see what sort of person this fellow is, to have told you such profound things. If something happens to my great-granddaughter in the future, over the words spoken to her by this person, then I will go after him and not relent. Great-grandpa, this has nothing to do with my coach. Qin Xian pleaded, with a cute and higher-pitched voice. Of course it has. If he did not tell you that not fighting is to reach the zenith, then you would not know the way of the empirical sword. If these words were not spoken, then you would not be so keen on learning this skill, the old man coldly said. Chapter 792 A King with 72 Wives After Hansen woke up, he logged into the virtual training camp. Qin Xian was already online, and she wasted no time in inviting him to a lobby. Coach, I have decided to learn empirical sword, Qin Xian told him directly. Okay, Hansen said. The way he saw things, Qin Xian was a woman who could do anything. She surmounted challenges of all sorts easily, and it was difficult to grasp that feeling with the other men he knew. He thought empirical sword would suit her just fine. They both matched against each other again, but this time, there was someone in the audience. It was a middle-aged gentleman. Qin Xian thought her great-grandfather was a strange man. He was incredibly old, but upon making his virtual avatar, he created a delicate and handsome middle-aged man. He had also taken to flirting with other online girls, something which annoyed her quite a bit. At least she was not compelled to inform others that it was indeed her great-grandfather. Admitting such a thing would be extremely embarrassing. After their fight was over, Qin Xian hesitated for a bit before talking. When she spoke, she said, Coach, I have a friend who would like to match against you. Would this be okay? Sure. Hansen quickly agreed, as it did not concern him who he practiced with. Cool. I will ask him to invite you then. Qin Xian felt relieved, not hearing Hansen ask her who this person was. If he had, she wouldn't have known how to answer him. She could not lie, but admitting the truth would be painful. After waiting a bit, Hansen saw a friend request pop up, alongside the ID of its sender. It was called A King with 72 Wives, a name which made Hansen laugh. He happily accepted the request. This name was one of the primary reasons why Qin Xin did not want to introduce the person as her great-grandfather. After Hansen added him as a friend, he received a match invite. He agreed, but did not expect the person he was about to face to be a demigod. Qin Xin was prepared to watch the fight, but her entry was prevented. A fighter has disabled spectating. Entry is prohibited. 
Hearing the system announcement, Qin Shen froze. She had no idea why she had been locked out. Great Grandpa, what are you doing? Qin Shen sent Qin Tai Shen a message. The recipient has disabled their messaging functionality. Try again later. When Qin Shen heard this second announcement, she began to feel awful. She had no idea what her great grandfather sought to do. When Hansen entered the arena, his body felt a great chill. He could sense a feeling of danger encroach and swell inside him. It was the sort of feeling that suggested he was not going up against a person, but rather a monster. If he was in the sanctuary, he'd turn tail and run within a heartbeat. This scary feeling made him tremble. He was not afraid in his mind, however. His body's reaction was only natural when faced with the potential of extreme danger. It was merely quite strange for him, since he had never suffered this reaction before. Hansen forced his body to calm down, and after doing so, approached to observe his opponent. Hansen knew there would be no point in running. If he ever met someone in real life who could make his body shiver like this, he knew he wouldn't be granted the opportunity of flight. Hansen was simply glad he had only encountered this person here in the virtual Skynet, and he wasn't a real enemy of his. Why have you convinced Qin Xian to learn that skill? Qin Tai Xian coldly asked. Because I think it suits her, Hansen said, not looking to hide anything. Although he did not compel Qin Xian to learn it, he hoped that she would learn it due to how well it suited her. Then let me see if you have what it takes to even think about it. Qin Tai Xian stepped forward and his hands became blades. Without pause, he slashed towards Han Sr. In this virtual world, when Hansen saw the strike come, he felt as if the world had gotten smaller. It was like the entire space was taken by this attack, and he could neither move nor dodge. He felt as if he would just have to stand and wait there, anticipating the moment he would be broken by his opponent. Hansen knew that it wasn't the power gap between the two that prohibited him from fighting back. It was just the feelings he was suffering from, as a result of going against someone of a much higher tier. It stifled him. Hansen's heart was tough and he had frequently found himself triumphing over life or death moments. Thinking this over, he became determined not to lose over the strength he perceived someone else to have. He cast the Dongshin Sutra, which resulted in his body shaking. But still, his eyes shone bright with determination, devoid of any glimmer of a desire to back out. All he did was stare at the hand that approached him. He did not move back nor forward. Instead, he moved horizontally. Ping. When the attack landed, he felt as if his chest was about to be torn open. One of his arms and half a shoulder were sliced off. The system simulated the appearance of gushing blood, as his HP bar was brought down to a sliver. But the opponent's attack did not defeat him right away, and he still had a single-digit amount of HP left. Qin Taishuan's eyes looked strange. He could tell that his opponent was not some leader in an army and was instead just a young man. But for a young man to have such a reaction towards his attack was special, and even here in a virtual community, it surprised Qin Taishin a great amount. If Hansen backed off, then that would mean his mind was lost. If he went forward, then that would imply he was reckless under pressure. No matter which way Hansen went, he'd have been defeated. But under such pressure, Hansen could still use his best judgment and heed his own advice. To this, Qin Taishin was surprised and in great admiration of him. Qin Taishian thought it was incredible to see a young man such as this. If you have convinced little Xian Xian to learn this skill, you must be responsible. Qin Taishian merely looked at Hansen now, forgoing a desire to attack. Hansen was preparing to fight back, but put away his attempt upon hearing him speak. His heart could properly take in what was spoken, so he asked, Responsible? Responsible for what? If a powerful sword lacks a proper scabbard, then it will inevitably harm the wielder. If you have suggested that she learn empirical sword, then you must be her scabbard, Qin Taishin said with calm gravitas. Chapter 793, Exceeding Ultimate Mode Scabbard? Hansen was unsure what he meant. Qin Xian was only seeking to learn a new sword skill. It wasn't as if she was being melted down and reforged into a blade herself. What scabbard? The most important aspect of empirical sword lies in the ruler's heart. If there is no heart, there can be no sword. But this heart. Qin Taishin sighed and then continued to say, The absolute power is dependent on the heart. If the heart sinks, so too does the power. She needs a person to keep her feeling as if she were in danger. She needs a person who gives her purpose to proceed and strive ever forward, not to remain where she is and be content. 
Only they can sharpen the sword, the sword that will be sheathed inside the scabbard you will embody. Why me? Hansen asked with confusion. There were many elites in the Qin family, so Hansen did not understand why Qin Taishin wanted him to be the scabbard. He was an outsider, and no one else in the Qin family even knew about him. If you do not know the heart, how can you be the scabbard? Qin Taishin said, while staring at Han Senator, he continued, Tell me your name, kid. I can only suppose you are someone special. Qin Taishin believed Hansen to hail from a big family, if he indeed possessed such wisdom. The kid intrigued him very much and so, he wanted to confirm his identity before allowing him to become the scabbard. Hansen hesitated for a moment and then said, I am Hans Senator I am a subordinate of. Team Qin. Now I am captain of the special squad. If I can help Team Qin, I will do whatever I am able to. You are Hansen? Qin Taishin looked at him in a strange way. Qin Taishin had heard Han Sen's name before, but not through his achievements. It was because he was the son-in-law of Ji Ruajin and had a blood relation with the Luo family. Yes. If you need me, give me a call. Hansa nodded, as there was nothing else he could say. And there was nothing else he could do to prove he was indeed Han Sr. Have you joined the Luo family? Qin Taishin wore a serious look. My surname is Han, not Luo, Hansen replied. Qin Taishuan's expression was complex, and after a brief time of silence elapsed between the two, he said to Hansen, Qin Xian will be depending on you. What should I do? Hansen was not sure what was needed to be a good scabbard. Spend time practicing with her. Beat her, but not too harshly. Qin Taishin said this and prepared to leave. How can I contact you? Hansen asked. My name is Qin Taishin, he answered. Hansen was shocked, and in his heart, he thought to himself, the demigod Qin Taishian? It is no wonder he is so powerful. I am afraid he already went easy on me. If he didn't, I wouldn't be standing here with a modicum of health remaining. Old Shane, there is something I must ask. Hansen felt embarrassed. What is it? Qin Taishian looked at Han Sr. Qin Xian does not know who I am. Could you please not tell her? If you told her, I can only suspect she will become mad. Hansen bore a wry smile. Okay. Qin Taishian nodded. Thank you, old Qin. Hansen was now beaming with happiness. After Hansen departed, Qin Taishian looked puzzled. He thought to himself, I hope he does not join the Luo family. A person like that, joining them? It would either be the luckiest thing or the worst thing for the alliance. Great grandpa, what were you doing with my coach? Qin Xian finally saw him return and asked the question as quickly as possible. Nothing. I was just testing him. I wanted to see if he was sufficiently qualified to teach my cute, great-granddaughter. He is all right. Qin Taishin smiled. Why would you not allow me to see? Qin Xian looked as if she didn't entirely trust what he had to say. Qin Taishin merely squinted and said, Do you want to stand around here all day chatting? Or do you want to come home with me so that I can show you the true empirical sword? I can learn it? Qin Xian looked surprised, not expecting to be allowed to learn it so soon. The empirical sword she had previously learnt was just a skill. The hypergeno art was forbidden from the family, and without Qin Taishuan's permission, she wouldn't even be allowed to look upon it. Remember this, to not fight is the most oppressive thing you can do. To learn this without heeding that will only harm you, Qin Taishian said, with an unreadable expression. Hansen practiced with Qin Xian every day, and when he wasn't practicing, he spent his time playing Hand of God. Playing Hand of God actually aided the training of his perception. And especially so, since he was going up against bots. Highly advanced AI posed a far greater challenge to him than humans did. The primary reason for this was because of the AI's reaction speeds, which far exceeded that of ordinary humans. The AI always knew when the next light spot was to appear. With AI as your opponents, you would need brilliant abilities of perception. You would have to accurately predict where the light spot was before the AI itself became aware, and then react before they did. Hansen chose to compete against the hardest level of AI, one which other humans had great difficulty going against. In the beginning, Hansen's success rate was low, only managing to get two light spots out of every hundred. And even those times were through guesses. But as Hansen became more powerful, the number of light spots he managed to obtain increased. After all, the AI was programmed and scripted, adhering to rules established by the creators. Over time, Hansen began to get a feel for the AI's rhythm, and as he did, his success rate grew. 
After two months of constant practice, Hansen's perception with his Dongshin aura only continued to improve. By that time, it had almost wholly caught up with Jadeskin's eighth sense. Congratulations! You have beaten Hand of God's Super Mode. After getting the final light spot, the announcement played to congratulate Han Sr. At the same time, the whole community of Hand of God played the announcement. Evolver class player, when a girlfriend, is now the first player to complete Super Mode and has been granted the title, Hand of God. The announcement played three times across the entire community and brought everyone to a standstill. Holy smokes. Is that for real? An Evolver finished Super Mode? Who is that powerful? They must be cheating. How can an Evolver finish Super Mode? He must have been single for 50 years, willing to do anything to win a girlfriend. I don't think the system can make mistakes. But I'll echo your sentiments and ask how an Evolver could possibly pass this difficulty? Many people believe the feat to have been impossible. A lot of the professional Hand of God players went to search for the identity of the player only known as Win a Girlfriend. They added him as a friend and invited Hansen to play many times to see how good he truly was. When Hansen saw the first request, he accepted it. But later, the friend request tone was like a fire alarm. Unable to cope with the number of requests he was suddenly receiving, he simply decided to turn on his busy status. The only person he accepted sent him a match request. Player God's Third Hand has sent you a match request. Will you accept? Chapter 794 The Hand That Orchestrates Fate God's Third Hand was a very famous player in the Hand of God community circles. Over the past five years, God's Third Hand had managed to beat out every other professional Evolver Hand of God player, coming first place in four of the annual Hand of God championships in the process. His talent for the game resulted in others referring to him as God's favorite child. In addition to his constant practice of the game, his legendary status was achieved in a variety of different ways. And aside from being naturally talented, he had a special hypergeno art that aided his play. Everyone knew his name in the Hand of God circles, but even he had yet to beat Super Mode. His speed and reactions could not match that of the AI, and it had been believed that Evolvers were unable to beat the Master Level AI. But now, all of a sudden, an unknown Evolver had managed to beat Super Mode. It was difficult for people to believe, and he did not believe it, either. He assumed whoever had won had managed to forge their identity, and thus it was most likely a surpasser acting under the guise of an Evolver. That was how the cheater had managed to do it, he believed. God's third hand wasted no time in inviting Hansen to match, and he was keen to prove whether or not his theory was correct. Hansen had spent much time battling the AI to beat the hardest difficulty. To keep going was pointless, but now that a real person had invited him to play, his interest was reinvigorated. Thinking it might be fun, he accepted the invite without hesitation. When a girlfriend and God's third hand now compete, the system announced as a special treatment for those who had achieved the title hand of God. Hearing this news, everyone was shocked. They all quickly scrambled to spectate the match. God's third hand was very famous and widely recognized as a legendary professional with the game. Hansen, who was unknown and had just achieved the title hand of God, was going to compete with him. Intense matches such as this were rare, and only those widely invested in the game could truly grasp how monumental an event such as this really was. Hansen did not know his one randomly accepted friend request would result in this, and he at first thought God's third hand was just another average, run-of-the-mill player. To be the very first person to send a request, you'd need to be lightning quick. So perhaps it made sense that God's third hand had gotten in first. But even if Hansen knew beforehand how strong he was, he wouldn't have cared too much. The match started, and every eye in the audience turned to view their hands. With bated breath, they tensely anticipated the appearance of the first light to show. Whoever hit a hundred light spots first would be deemed the victor. You could either grab the lights near you, or the ones belonging to your opponent. Each light spot was worth one point, and one hundred was needed to win. God's third hand watched Hans Sen's hands intently, eagerly waiting to witness his speed. If he was too fast, then God's third hand would know he was just a cheap cheater. Many people thought the same way as God's third hand, too. After all, he had been playing for many years, and not a single Evolver had yet to reach 50% completion of Super Mode. And that included God's third hand. Somehow, this previously unknown, when a girlfriend, entered the scene and finished what was believed to be impossible. 
Few people put stock in the validity of the win. The first light spot appeared, and everyone looked at Han Sen's hand. Much to the surprise of everyone, the hand moved relatively slowly. The speed was remarkably average when compared to most high-level players. He couldn't compete well in traditional match-made games if he genuinely played like that. Did he really beat Super Mode with such speed? Everyone thought to themselves. God's third hand frowned, also thinking Han Sen's move was slow. But just as he went to reach his own light spot, he noticed Han Sen had already taken it. One o'clock. Whoa. Seeing this, many people made a variety of different noises indicating surprise. God's third hand was faster, so how could when a girlfriend grabbed the light spot first? That confused many people. When a girlfriend now moved to God's third hand's side, looking as if he was about to steal his next light spot, God's third hand's face looked cold, and he did not believe his opponent's speed would be enough to beat him. But this was exactly what he wanted. To fight him face to face would expose his speed and reveal to everyone how much of a cheater his rival was. Over the next minute, however, God's third hand felt as if he had slipped into a sordid nightmare. Han Sen's hands were not fast, and they were most certainly slower than his own, but God's third hand had not managed to grab a single light spot. It was so strange, it genuinely made him feel as if he was having a bad dream. No matter how hard he tried, no matter how much effort he put into increasing his own speed, he couldn't hit a single light spot. The audience was entirely quiet, as well, unable to believe what they were seeing. A legendary professional player did not have a single point. It would have made sense if Han Sen's hands were fast, but they weren't. In fact, he looked very relaxed. But God's third hand's light spots were all snatched by the flimsy, casual hands. It made people feel pretty awkward on God's third hand's behalf. And nobody could really understand what was going on. The true elites of Hand of God were even more shocked than the rest of the audience. They believed God's third hand's movements were seen by Hansen beforehand. It was like Hansen treated God's third hand like a puppet on a string. This cannot be real. Everyone started to think. At the same time, they realized how scary this thought genuinely was. The man was a legendary, professional player who had won numerous contests. Yet now, he was getting wrecked by a person they hadn't seen before. Truly, this new contender was frighteningly strong. No one believed Hansen was cheating now, either. Even if he was playing against the AI, cheating would only enable him to react faster. He couldn't actively work to block an opponent from grabbing a light spot. AI could not predict the decisions of a human. But even if you did not directly compete with the AI, you could still manage to grab light spots for yourself. For that slow speed to prohibit every approach by God's third hand was something not even the AI was able to do. It's like he can control fate itself. This person is the real hand of God, the audience thought to themselves. Chapter 795, The Monster That Inhabits Emerald Lake After the match was over, Hansen exited the virtual community. He thought battling other humans was fairly lame and all-around boring. He viewed competition against the AI to be much more exciting. Until he could challenge a surpasser, it was a waste of his time. The fact that the match was considered boring was something that rocked the entire Hand of God community. A legendary, professional player God's third hand was bullied into defeat with a final score of 100 to nil. It was a shocker. A video of the match circulated virally, as everyone who saw it shared and passed it on. No matter who ended up watching it, they were amazed. But no one suspected when a girlfriend was cheating, and rightfully so. Cheats only allowed someone to speed up, and Han Sen's hands were actually slower than his opponents. Many Hand of God professionals analyzed the match since the details of the match promised to bring the game into a new era. Previously, it was entirely believed to be a game of speed. After one match, it was revealed to everyone that it could be something more. No longer was it about collecting points through speed alone. Now it was about prediction and foresight. And it was possible to play mind games on your opponent and work to prevent your opponent from collecting their points. A new era began and this match was officially documented as a guide and a showcase for players. And so, as it was handed out more and more, it became even more widely known. Many people wanted to uncover the identity of the enigmatic when a girlfriend. Some teams and organizations even placed a bounty for any concrete information that could aid in the discovery of who the player truly was. But after time elapsed, with no progress in such investigations, the trail went cold. Hansen no longer had any interest in playing Hand of God. 
he decided to return to the sanctuary, since the sensing abilities of his Dongshan aura were almost on par with his Jade Skin's eighth sense. He believed by now, he had what it took to overcome Falsified Sky Sutra, and thus, Hansen wanted to find Luo Yin again. He wanted to see if he could well and truly beat the Falsified Sky powers. But Luo Yin was not there, so he reverted back to his original plan, the one that led him to encounter Luo Yin in the first place. Hansen returned to the Emerald Lake, in the hope he could find the dinosaurs that had been said to reside there, the parent and child. If they did not live together, then Hansen thought he had a fair chance of killing them. After the silver fox had eaten the second-generation devil eye spider, it seemed to have grown up quite a bit. Its energy flow had almost reached the same level as the fairies. While these changes occurred on the inside, little happened to its exterior. It looked practically the same as it always had, so it didn't seem as if it was yet an adult. Hansen pulled out the corpse of the silver-winged butterfly, and the silver fox's eyes began to shine towards it. The silver fox hopped onto Hansen's hand in the hopes of swallowing it. But Hansen suddenly pulled back his hand. He looked at the silver fox and said, Little silver, I treat you better than I would my own son. I give you everything. If you ever think to betray me, I will never forgive you. Do you understand? The silver fox used its head to rub Hansen, as saliva drooled from its mouth into the fabric of his clothes. When Hansen put his hand down, the silver fox leapt off and gobbled up the butterfly in a second flat. Its body seemed to shake and tremble afterwards. Silver lightning suddenly burst forth from it, like silk. This static silk crackled and weaved its way around to encase the silver fox in a silver cocoon. Hansen used his Dongshin aura to watch the cocoon and took a surprised notice of the chaotic energy that swirled inside. It was like a volcano, preparing to erupt at any second. Is it finally growing up? Hansen felt relieved. He was worried that even after eating the silver butterfly, there'd be no change. If so, Hansen hadn't a clue how much longer it would take. Hansen did not know how long it would take for the silver fox to finish its time inside the cocoon, either, but he didn't fancy waiting around. So, he stuffed the cocoon inside his pack and resumed his journey to the Emerald Lake. The Emerald Lake sparkled green and all you could see was the green, unspoiled surface reflecting the sky above. It was a gorgeous view to behold. Upon reaching the lake, Hansen walked around its length but did not find a single super creature. He used his Dongshin aura to scan the water. He could only skin up to a depth of about 10 meters, despite how deep it truly was. As a result, he was unable to find anything. Friend, have you come here looking for dinosaurs? A bunch of us have established a camp, and with a fire and we're having a barbecue. A man appeared and greeted Hansen, inviting him to join in the festivities. It was rare to see a man so passionate and welcoming, so Hansen did not hesitate to oblige and take a seat. They spoke together for some time, and Hansen learned the group was a bunch of friends that composed a squad. They all knew each other back in the first god sanctuary, but they all happened to be sent to the same region in the second god sanctuary. Such an occurrence was highly unlikely, and so, they took it as a sign that they should form a team. Passing by this lake, they had heard the tales of a dinosaur supposedly inhabiting the place. Therefore, they decided to stop for a while and scope the place out. They had been camping at the same spot for two days, but alas, they hadn't seen anything out of the ordinary. Which squad are you from? Luyuni asked. My squad is a bit special. It is not appropriate for me to discuss their affairs here. Hansen smiled. A special team. Huh? Has anything interesting hit the airwaves? Is there any juicy gossip you can share with us? Someone else asked. Just as Hansen was about to tell them a story, he heard watery splashes. Suddenly, the glassy surface of the lake was disturbed, and the tide that caressed the grassy skirt of the lake began to rise. A wave that was a few meters high was generated, and it quickly came in the direction of the camp. Under the force of the sudden tsunami, the fire was immediately put out and the tents were all ruined. Everyone, now drenched, looked out towards the lake. They saw something with the neck and head of a giraffe emerge from the water. This was much bigger than the dinosaur they had previously expected. Its body had to be over a hundred meters wide. It was ridiculous. Near the monster, a little version of itself lay. Its body was smaller, at only about ten meters wide. They both exited the waters and climbed upon the shore. At the ghastly sight, Lu Yuni and his team froze. It was rare to see creatures of such Goliath proportions inhabiting a sanctuary. 
Boss, should we fight? Someone asked Lu Yuni. Lu Yuni smiled wryly and muttered, Do you have a death wish? It's huge. Our weapons would only be capable of tickling such a fiend. Its tail alone could wipe us out. As their dialogue unfolded, Hansen was already running towards the two creatures. He used his Da Shin aura to scan them. The big one's life force, although blurry, was incredibly strong. It was a first-generation super creature. The small one's energy flow was running strangely, but that aside, it was clear. It was a second-generation super creature. It was rare to find a second-generation super creature that was alone, and although the big one was beside it, Hansen didn't see a reason why he could not kill it. Chapter 796 Killing the Smaller Monster The little angel flapped her wings and flew directly to the big monster's head, as Hansen took off running to the smaller monster. His fitness had almost reached the level of a juvenile super creature at this point, and with the flaming wreck spike in hand, it wouldn't be too difficult for him to slay his target. The small black scaled monster, seeing Hansen run towards it, shouted. Its mouth became a black, gaping maw with a set of wretched fangs piercing out of that darkness. Hansen swung the flaming wreck spike down towards it. The monster did not flee or evade the attack, and instead used its own head as a deflector. When the wreck spike collided with the black scales, a deep noise was emitted. Hansen felt a terrible power surge into his hands from the monster's head, as the wreck spike failed to crack open the scales of the beast. The power that pushed back was so strong, it hurled Hansen into the air and sent him through a few spins as he went. That is quite powerful. This thing must have a really high vitality. Hansen borrowed strength from the air he was born onto and returned to engage the small monster. Lu Yuni and his group were frozen stiff, watching the crazy waves that continued to surge out of the wild waters of the lake. Hansen and his angel had fearlessly gone to battle the monsters there, and in the chaos of the scene, it was difficult to tell who would emerge triumphant. Holy crap! Where did this elite come from? He can actually go toe-to-toe -to -toe with these things and potentially beat them? That angel-looking lady must be a pet beast soul. It's so strong and beautiful. What are you guys hanging around for? We should quickly retreat and fall back. The little angel invaded every inch of the big monster's personal space and attacked its head repeatedly. She wanted to strike its eyes and blind it, but the monster's vitality was extraordinarily high, and so its flesh was incredibly difficult to get through. Unable to deal much in the way of damage, even the little angel ended up dodging more than she could attack. Her greatsword smacked the creature's head numerous times, but its skull was sufficiently guarded by its hardy scales. Despite the effort of her attacks, only a shallow scratch mark was left behind by each strike. In comparison to the beast at large, she might as well have tried tickling the fiend. The small monster was angrier and less composed, however. It ignored Han Sin's attacks and instead tried to attack him, even at the cost of ensuring its own defense. The black scales looked tougher than the big monsters, however, and the creature itself looked more powerful. The big monster took notice of the little one chasing Hansen around, which put its concern at ease. With continued composure, it calmly fought the little angel that had targeted it. Hansen fell back more and more, attempting to lure the smaller creature away. He was initially worried that the small one might not follow so he prepared to use his devil eye spider beast soul in order to seduce it. But this was not necessary due to the monster's feistiness. Attracting it his way was the easiest aspect of the ensuing battle. Hansen eventually managed to lead the small monster into the nearby woods. Its teeth gnashed in a fearsome bloodlust as it chased after Hansen with murder in its eyes. Although the little monster was strong and powerful, it came as a surprise to Hansen that it had evidently not lived for very long. It clearly knew little of the world at large. Now, seeing Hansen stop, it gaped its hungry maw and leapt towards him. The fangs of its mouth were like daggers as they came, but Hansen did not fall back at the sight of their gnashing hunger. Just as the mouth came close, ready to tear his face off, Hansen drove the wreck spike deep into the creature's mouth. The flaming wreck spike spun like a drill, as flames blazed and wreathed their way around it. With Hansen's surprise attack, the weapon was shoved deep into the monster's throat. Like mud from a manic drill bit, blood squirted out from the ravaged throat of the beast. The little monster squealed in absolute pain, but its cry was muted due to the presence of the ravenous wreck spike. Hansen's heart pounded with the thrill as he channeled an infinite source of power into the wreck spike. His push with the weapon did not recede, and Hansen slowly worked the weapon into the creature's stomach. 
In a moment's notice, the two-yard-long Rex spike had been driven a full three feet into the mouth of the super creature, and Hansen primed it to go deeper. Amidst the blood and shredded flesh of its butchered throat, the monster could do little but shake its head. As it shook vigorously, it sent Hansen and the Rex spike flying into the air. The strength of its wiggle was too powerful, and even Hansen was unable to withstand the velocity. The little monster let out a cry of pain after throwing away its violent aggressor, and this alerted the big monster to the little one's danger. Immediately, its concerned parent stomped its way through the trees to its aid. The giant, hulking body made the ground quake with each step it took. The lake was thrown into utter turmoil as it left the battered waters behind. Although the little angel wanted to stop the approach of the big monster, she couldn't deal a critical hit to the monster or find a weak spot she could exploit. Thus, nothing she did could grab its attention. Even as she repeatedly struck its scaly skin, the sword could do nothing. Seeing the big monster heading his way, Hansen knew it would only have to take two more steps before it was directly in front of him. He knew he had to act fast, so he quickly retrieved his Rex spike and ran towards the little monster. Without thinking, he rammed it up the baby monster's butthole with all his might. The Rex spike was driven an entire meter up its backside, as blood burst from the exploited hole like unclogged plumbing. Its upper body had already been severely injured, and now, its lower body was being quickly made the same. It squealed in agony and fell down to the ground. It exerted much effort in trying to stabilize itself, but try as it might, it could not stand back up. Hansen was not content to stop there, and he was determined to push harder and end the monster's life as soon as he possibly could. But the big monster was approaching quickly, like a mountain bearing down on him. Hansen knew he couldn't remain where he was much longer, so he pulled his Rex spike out and retreated. Boom. The giant monster brought another foot down and crushed trees and fallen logs into kindling. The diameter of each footprint left behind was 10 meters. Hansen dodged the foot, but it only by a small margin. The little monster finally managed to regain its balance and stand up, then crawled nearby the bigger monster. When the big monster noticed the wounds its young one had incurred, its wrath was stoked. Wild flames of anger now burned for Hans Sr. The giant monster roared and tried to crush Hans and underfoot once more. The vitality-based monster was not something he could compete with, so Hansen had no choice but to fall back. Hansen cast arrow and used it to more easily evade the stomping of the raging behemoth. All the while, the little angel continued trying to attack the big monster's eyes. Her attempts were ineffective, however. The monster's neck was surprisingly spry, and it managed to duck and weave to avoid many of her strikes. As this was unfolding, Hansen looked for an opportunity to swing back around and finish off the smaller monster. Unfortunately for him, the opportunity was taking its time in revealing itself. But during this intense observation, a new sound came from the skies above. A black and metallic tiger, one with wings, descended from the skies. It flew extremely fast and within a second, it landed behind the big monster. Its four paws shredded the little monster's body. Then, it grabbed the little monster, flapped its wings, and took off flying to the west. That be asterisk start. Trying to steal my kill, are you? Hansen was infuriated. So he took off in flight and chased after the black tiger. Only Hansen was allowed to steal the kills of others, and the thought of this black tiger stealing his kill was unacceptable. The big monster, when seeing its little one get captured, ignored Hansen and tried to chase after the black tiger as well. The black tiger held onto the little monster with ease, despite how many tons it undoubtedly weighed, and it was still going too fast for him or the big monster to catch up. Chapter 797, Scary Shelter Hansen was fuming. He was the master of stealing easy kills from others, but now, someone had attempted to do the same thing to him. It was infuriating. In silence, Hansen blitzed through the sky in pursuit of the tiger. The little angel and the big monster also went after it, and in the big monster's wake, giant craters remained as the soil was upturned, mud was flung, rocks were smashed, and trees were crushed. Fortunately, there was no human shelter in the vicinity and neither would there be in the lands ahead. If even a royal shelter was to be in the rampaging behemoth's track, it'd be flattened within seconds. Hansen was the slowest of them all. He was in the back, and the distance that separated them only increased the further they went. The little angel and big monster were both faster than him. Hansen gritted his teeth and simulated light son of God's energy flow. With this, 
his speed increased by a vast amount. Through this, he was just about able to catch up and not get left behind. The black tiger was an extremely menacing creature to look at. Despite carrying such a large monster, it was able to continue its flight west and outpace them all without any trouble, whatsoever. Hansen chased after the black tiger for four days straight, and neither of the creatures slowed down. Hansen himself was unable to excuse the misdeed committed by the tiger, and with a burst of energy, swore to the high heaven he would catch up with the tiger and deliver its just desserts. The big monster felt the same. Gripped in the fearsome talons of the tiger's paws, its baby repeatedly cried out for aid over the course of their flight. The baby's perseverance had to be admired, and it was no wonder why it was a second-generation super creature. devil eye spiders had a weak vitality, and if they were the one snatched, they'd have died a long time ago. There was no way they'd remain alive, let alone muster the effort of screeching for help. But despite all their most valiant efforts, none were able to catch up with the black tiger. And by now, it had been eight days. Their flight had gone on so long and far, they had exited the Sand Dao River region. Treacherous mountain ranges are what lay in the distant lands ahead, ones which the black tiger was not hesitant to fly into once nearing them. Hansen looked ahead and stopped. Amidst all the mountains that were connected, there was one purple mountain that stuck out like a sore thumb. The black tiger landed on its slopes and dragged the small monster up with it. The purple mountain was a strange one, indeed. It was very tall and its peak rested somewhere above the clouds. On this peak was what looked like a palace. Hansen witnessed the black tiger land there and suspected things were only going to take a turn for the worse. For a spirit shelter to have a monster as wild as that, it wouldn't merely be a royal class one. Hansen recalled the little angel while the big monster went on ahead. It seemed as if it was willing to do whatever it took if it meant securing the safety of its child. The purple palace appeared semi-transparent as its appearance was masked and unmasked at the whims and travel of clouds. The black tiger raced its way to the top. The purple palace's double doors opened as if they were automatic, and with the squirming, screeching monster in its clutches, the tiger ran inside. Once it was beyond them, the doors closed and locked the big monster outside. The big monster was not willing to stop there, however. With its goliath body, it threw itself against the gates repeatedly, in a bid to bring it down. The big monster had a width of 100 meters, and it was at least 50 meters tall. But in the shadow of that door, it didn't appear so grand. They were of comparable height. Boom. The giant monster's body used all its strength in hitting the door, and each thud echoed far and wide. But despite its efforts, the stone gates did not budge a single inch. The monster's wretched power was nothing in comparison. The monster used so much strength in each push, it fell backward a few times after every throw of itself. It would scream aloud after each failed attempt, and then try once more. Nothing happened. The stone gate was firmly sealed, and no matter how much strength was exerted, the big monster was unable to break down the door. After all these hits, the monster had begun to bleed. And still, the door remained closed. Hansen was shocked while watching this. The powerful monster must have been a super creature and he suspected most second-generation sorts would be unable to kill him. Yet this one door, despite receiving the monster's absolute might, was unwilling to submit. It remained sealed, and Hansen suspected it was a testament to the strength of whatever master waited inside. Hansen frowned and flew back up into the sky, keen to take an aerial view of the site and see what creatures were inside the shelter. But while he was airborne, the site was entirely shrouded by mist. Unable to get a good look, Hansen felt his heart sink somewhat. With his eyesight and abilities of perception, he should have had no issue piercing the clouds with his vision. Strangely, he was unable to see anything. The clouds themselves were quite curious, however. Hansen summoned his devil eye mask and ran the devil eye spider's energy flow. Keenly, he looked back at the shelter once more. Although Hansen couldn't quite make out what was in there, he was able to espy the presence of a few flames that looked like life forces. One, two, Three, four, five. Hans encountered at least five super creatures inside. Of course, that was only what Hansen was able to see. He couldn't be sure whether or not there were any more inside. Perhaps I will indeed have to just give up this pursuit. Hansen gritted his teeth, hating his own suggestion. It was fairly obvious he'd be unable to deal with all the super creatures inside there, but he still did not want to just pack up and leave. It wasn't easy trying to locate and secure a second-generation super creature, 
so it was fairly bad for it just to be taken away from him in the manner it was. Ah, oh, screw it. I'm going to risk it. Let's see just how powerful this super spirit shelter really is. Even if I'm too weak, they'll be unable to kill me. If I can't get back the prey I worked so hard to nab, I'm going to mess this place up. Clenching his jaw, Hansen ran towards the purple door. The big monster and Hansen considered each other friends for the time being, and Hansen was willing to try to help open the door for it. If they both got inside, it might actually be possible for the big monster to take on two super creatures all by itself. If Hansen performed better, the prospect of earning a few more easy kills for himself would be delightful. Although the chances of this happening were slim, he was happy enough just to raise a little hell for the shelter as payback. Hansen ran before the gate, as the giant monster did its best to get it open. While the door remained undamaged, it was coated in the battered monster's blood. Hansen summoned his flaming wreck spike and tried fitting it where the seam for the double doors should be. As the wreck spike drilled into the door, countless sparks illuminated the area. But still, despite his efforts, the doors couldn't be opened. Not a single chip of the door was broken away, either. And now, Hansen was beginning to think it was too difficult. Boom. The big monster, seeing that Hansen was unable to open the door, hit it once more. Its mouth spat out blood, and it screamed in pain. This is not going to work. Even if we barge in now, we'll be half dead. Death would be all but certain upon our entry. Hansen gritted his teeth and flew into the shelter from above. The shelter was veiled in cloud, and he couldn't see a single thing. But right now, in his state of mind, he cared little. Hansen was going to fly in, try to open the door from the inside, and let the big monster in. Chapter 798 Getting into the Shelter The fog lay heavy, and Hansen made sure to summon his most useful beast souls before entering the mist. He pierced into the clouds without hindrance, but as he entered, a frightful feeling crept along his spine and chilled him to the bone. Hansen saw a fire-wreathed shadow approach from his side. If he wasn't wearing his devil eye mask, he wouldn't have caught its coming. Dong! The little angel came over to cover him, and her great sword collided with something in the fog. She was knocked back a bit, but before anything else could happen, their phantom assailant retreated into the deeper recesses of the mist. Before Hansen could continue his journey through the fog, the shadow came at them again from another side. It was fortunate Hansen was able to follow it as it neared, and command the little angel to respond appropriately. While Hansen commanded her to deflect the shadow's incoming attack, Hansen took advantage of the window of opportunity and flew faster through the fog towards the shelter. He knew that the shelter's walls were only a hundred meters away, but it now felt as if he had traveled several hundred meters. And still, he had yet to see the ground. Oh, no. The wretched realization that this was no ordinary fog dawned on Hans Senator he wanted to leave its stuffy clutch, but it was too late. Despite flying back a few hundred meters again, in the direction he had come, he was unable to exit. He wasn't going anywhere. But Hansen was at least glad he was in possession of the devil eye mask, so he could watch any creature that lurked inside the mist. It did well to keep him alert and out of danger. It seems as if there is only one super creature hiding out here in the mist with me. If the others don't come near, then perhaps I'll be able to kill it one-on-one, -on -one, Hansen thought to himself. He did not believe whatever super creature lurked around him would pose too much danger, and even without his devil eye mask, he could use his Da Shin aura to sense its presence and see it coming. The only problem was the need to deal with it quickly. If he didn't take care of it soon, it was only a matter of time before the big monster down below would beat itself to death against the doors. If that happened, Hansen would have one less ally on the field. The evil eye mask could only enable Hansen to watch the shadow of the creature. It was a life force, one that seemed to have been wrapped in flames. He couldn't quite see what sort of super creature it was. The little angel could not see very well in the mist, and she had to rely on the commands of her master for when and where to react. Hansen quietly drew his peacock crossbow and loaded it with Z steel bolts. He propped it up, ready for the creature's reemergence. Dong! The little angel used her great sword to knock away an incoming shadow. Hansen did not do anything yet, and he just patiently watched it. The flaming shadow failed in its attempts to attack a few times, and it appeared to be frustrated. So, it gave up trying to strike them, sunk into the mist, and watched the two in return. Hansen pretended as if he could not see it rolling his head in a number of different directions to feign inattention. But in truth, aside from the creature, he really could not see anything else. 
When he was outside, he had managed to catch the presence of other super creatures by spotting their life forces. But now, inside the mist, this singular life force was the only anomaly he could make out. After observing for a while, the flame began to believe Han San and the little angel had truly lost their target. It sailed through the fog behind Han San and slowly approached. Han San continued looking left and right, as if it, he had no idea where it was coming from. But with the Dongshin aura that he cast a while ago, he was able to keep an eye on its every slight movement. The flaming shadow came within 10 meters of Han Sin when it suddenly became enraged, and it launched itself towards the mist intruder. The moment the flame got close to Han Sen, he quickly turned around and used his flaming wreck spike to block the attack while his left hand fired the peacock crossbow repeatedly. Consecutively, he fired eight of the Z steel bolts towards the foe. Ping. But Han Sin and the wreck spike were rocked away upon the collision, which negatively affected his accuracy. Still, he heard a foreign noise in the mist sound three times. Three of the eight bolts had found their target. At the same time, Little Angel flew to the shadow's head and brought down the great sword upon it with all her might. Roar! The flaming shadow screamed in agony, seemingly injured by the bolts. Frantically, it tried to scramble back into the cover of the mist. But under the all-seeing gaze of the Devil Eye Mask, Hanson was able to observe its every move. With the Little Angel by his side, he took off after the Misty Menace. The creature had been well and truly fooled by Hansen, and now, the little angel instantly caught up with the monster. She swung her sword like a loon and brought an end to the fleeing monster's escape. Hansen fired the peacock crossbow again, emptying the other six bolts. The timing could not have been more perfect, as the creature had just exhausted all its strength in avoiding the brutal cleaves of the little angel's greatsword. More moans rumbled out across the fog as four of the bolts found their target. The creature trembled. Like a sudden streak of light, the little angel shot right past the creature. As she did so, a head launched into the sky, trailing blood. Before the choking mist could be dyed red, it began to disappear with the felling of its master. Super creature Mirage Gas Freak killed. No beast soul gained. The flesh of this creature is inedible, but you may harvest its life geno essence. Consume its life geno essence to gain 0 to 10 super geno points randomly. The mist faded, and Han Sen's prior vision of the shelter's walls and gate returned to him. It was only 10 meters away now. The mirage gas freak that the little angel had slain began to fade away. It was strange, like a cat. The head had been lopped off, and that too began to melt away with the body. Dong. A life geno essence, one that looked like an orb of solid mist, fell to the ground. Hansen made sure to pick it up, and after doing so, flew to the back of the gate that had previously barred their passage. Then, he lifted and removed the bolt that prevented its opening. After doing so, he made sure to make a quick escape backwards. Boom. The purple door was smashed open by the big monster. With a loud roar, it marched inside without hesitation. Inside the shelter was a large and beautiful palace, but strangely, it now seemed devoid of creatures or spirits. The place seemed empty. When the mirage cloud totally disappeared, Han Sen's vision became clearer. He couldn't see any creatures. Even the small monster that had been captured by the black tiger was totally gone, and not even its screams could be heard anymore. Ping. The big monster quickly arrived before the grand palace, and at its tall doors, it again tried to open them by throwing its weight. It wanted to see with its own eyes whether or not the little monster was inside. Its strike did not collapse the palace, but as Hansen watched, he saw the flash of a sword. Suddenly, a huge, bloody gash had been drawn deep into the big monster's hardy scales. Chapter 799 Phantom Armor The big monster roared in agony as its giant body tumbled a few steps backward. Blood cascaded from the wound, coloring its scales. From inside the palace, a shadow creature emerged, wielding a steel great sword and clad in steel armor. Taking a closer look, Hansen noticed that the armaments were not actually affixed to a person or creature. Despite being fitted in the shape of a human, the armor was not actually clothing anyone. The armor was empty, as if it were possessed. In between the plating of the armor, all he could espy was the flicker of a ghostly green light. Is this a creature? Or is it a spirit? Hansen watched the armored monster with uncertainty. Roar! The steel armor moved, and so too did the two-meter-long greatsword. Its speed and power was most impressive, and it left another deep cleft in the big monster's body. 
A green light imbued and enshrouded the great sword, exceeding the length of the weapon by an additional meter. The green light looked sharp, and for it to break through the scales of the behemoth, it must have been far more powerful than the great sword the little angel wielded. Although the big monster tried to step on the possessed armor below, it was too heavy and slow. It missed the phantom foe, and upon bringing its foot down, the menace began chopping it up. The leg used blood from every cut, and the monster screamed in absolute agony. Hansen thought of helping it out, but he saw three other monsters enter from the sides of the plaza before the palace. They were being surrounded. A 30-meter tall ape, a four-legged snake, and a winged black tiger all appeared, each from a different direction. The winged black tiger roared and approached them. Hansen commanded his little angel to engage the tiger. The snake and the ape approached Hansen together. The ape threw a fist down towards Hansen, an attack which he dodged with ease. But the force of that fist was such that the ground quaked. The four-legged snake flung out its tongue, which looked like a bloody whip. It was incredibly fast, and it almost tangled and knotted its way around Hans Sr. His flaming wreck spike retaliated with a strike against the big ape's arm, which only created a light scuff. He couldn't damage it. The four-legged snake was too fast for Hans Sin, and it was difficult for him to evade in between dishing out his own attacks. One-on-one -on -one was already difficult enough, but now he was being challenged by two. This was an extremely dangerous situation for him to be in. Ping. Hansen tried to dodge the snake's attack, but he was dealt a blow by the ape instead. His body was launched away as if it had been fired from a cannon. He traveled a dozen meters and slammed into the palace wall. With his body in a crumpled heap, he spat out blood. The snake and ape didn't relent, and Hansen jumped away with pain in his chest as they approached. He leapt near the big monster and used his flaming wreck spike against the armored phantom monster. Dong! The armored phantom saw the incoming strike, and it raised its great sword to block it. In the collision, Hansen took a few steps back. The ape and the snake managed to catch up with him, and the big monster decided to aid Hansen in return. It roared and ran toward the ape. The two monsters were incredibly loud as they duked it out, every impact between them making a deafening noise. The big monster was having difficulty with the agile armored phantom, but fared far better against the ape. Hansen cast his Dongshin aura to do battle with the armored phantom. It was far better for him to deal with it than to attempt to combat the massive ape. This exchange of opponents was the right move, as it placed them both in the realm of combat they exceeded in. Still, the snake was after Hansen, and this made him frown. Fairy, I have taken care of you for far too long with no return. It's about time you do something for me. Hansen leapt out of the way of the snake's razor tongue, brought out the scala shell, and threw it towards the snake. The snake avoided the scallop, and it fell down to the ground. The lid of the scallop finally moved, and the fairy emerged from it in a rage. She looked at the snake and immediately cast her icy self-buffs and flew directly before it. Hansen sighed. It was fortunate for him that the fairy was willing to aid him in his time of need and wasn't going to remain her lazy self in such dire circumstances. Now that every creature had a single rival of its own, Hansen was able to focus his attention solely on the phantom armor. The phantom armor was still an obscenely powerful foe, and its agility and finesse with the blade was just as good as Hansen's. Against strength that far outmatched his own, Hansen had to take advantage of the one area of combat he did have an advantage in speed. But the armored phantom swung its green light-wreathed steel greatsword with tremendous power. When Hansen brought his flaming wreck spike up to deflect it, his weapon was given a fairly large dent. Following this, Hansen did not dare interact with his enemy's sword directly. He used his Dongshin aura and cast a formation to outpace his opponent. He found an opening in which he could safely attack, so he quickly took advantage of it and swung the wreck spike. It struck the ghostly armor to little effect so he quickly fell back. Hansen then thought of attacking a gap in the armor, since that might allow him to deal the damage he sought. The flaming wreck spike, however, was too big. It wouldn't have been able to strike the fine slits that existed between the armor plating. Hansen continued dodging the attacks of its green light, and at the same time thought to himself, it's a shame that the raw Z-steel short sword I asked the Wong family to forge for me has yet to be completed. If I had it with me now, this would be a great opportunity to test its effectiveness. Without any other choice, Hansen drew a raw Z steel bolt in his hand. When the time was right, he could use his hand to drive it through what was possibly the weak spot of the Phantom Menace. Elsewhere, 
The Little Angel and the Black Tiger continued battling each other in airborne combat. The body of the Black Tiger was like metal, and the claws of its paws were incredibly lethal. It didn't have a single disadvantage when going against the Little Angel, so it was difficult to presume which one might emerge victorious. The battle between the Big Ape and the Big Monster was the bloodiest of all. They were both vitality-based super creatures, and each of their attacks rocked and shook the shelter. They had both been brutally injured as they fought. This was especially so for the big monster that had been severely injured before starting to fight. In the battle with the ape, its wounds had been exploited, and the behemoth was not in good condition. The fairy was the most relaxed creature of all. The snake was slower than she was, and the tongue could never latch onto its target. The frosty projectiles the fairy cast out only made it slower, as well. Pang, the fairy threw her little fist out and smacked the snake's face fiercely. Almost instantly, blood was drawn from its hideous mouth. The snake did seem very powerful, however, and it didn't seem likely that the fairy could end its life any time soon. Hansen could not deal with the armored phantom on his own, though, and seeing the big monster about to be defeated by the big ape, he became worried. If the big monster fell, it would tip the scales of their battle off balance and they would be unfairly matched. If that were to occur, he'd have no choice but to fall back. Hansen gritted his teeth and cast Dong Shen Sutra. He turned his own energy into a holy light, and when he found the right moment, he cast the holy light onto the big monster to heal its wounds. The holy light he simulated, received from the rhino, had incredible healing properties. When the cast light reached the wounds, they instantly began to seal themselves up. Chapter 800 Super Spirit Hansen tried his hardest to cast the holy light and heal the big monster's wounds, and it wasn't long before its vitality was restored enough for it to continue its fight with renewed vigor. Hansen felt relieved. At least I have a grip on the situation for the time being. Hansen returned his focus to the armored phantom. With his Dongxian aura, it was not difficult to use his Dongxian powers to dodge his foe's attacks. Hansen did not expect to defeat him in his current situation, but he at least wanted to drag out their fight and buy some time for his other companions to resolve their own battles. In between his evasions, Hansen took every chance he could to continue healing the big monster so it could carry on fighting the fearsome ape. Hansen was primarily waiting for the fairy to finish killing the snake. Once she was done, he envisioned a snowball effect in which they could outnumber the others and end them. Fighting the armored phantom alone was a little too much for him. It's a shame that little silver is still evolving. If it was done by now, bringing about an end to these felons and the shelter they inhabit would be easy peasy, Hansen thought to himself. Hansen continued using his Dongshan aura to scan the armored phantom. He had managed to learn that it was a second generation super creature of sorts, and it harbored a strange and unique energy flow. Could this energy flow be what's activating the green light to enshroud and empower the sword? If it is, that's brilliant. The light is extremely efficient, but that aside, doesn't it just look so cool? Hansen kept walking backwards, watching and recording the phantom's energy flow. The fairy was doing fairly well. Her little fists were repeatedly unleashed against the snake's head, and each punch shook blood from the battered face. When the blood reached the ground, however, it became ice. Hansen scanned the snake and saw that its energy flow was all blurry. This told him it was a first-generation super creature. The great ape was the same, as well a first-generation super-creature. The black tiger in the sky was too far away from him for now, so he couldn't tell just yet. Hansen noticed that the snake was about to be killed by the fairy, but his sudden burst of happiness was snatched away by a stronger feeling of dread. Deep inside the shelter, a life force approached. It did not venture their way fast, but that made it all the more ominous. The life force was horridly powerful. Hansen used his devil eye mask to take a look and he saw a flaming red life force arise. Whatever was headed their way was getting closer. Oh, no. This shelter has another super creature. Hansen immediately became disheartened at this worrying revelation. He had tirelessly battled to reach this stage, and the thought of having to flee without a reward was criminal. If the horrible creature joined in the fight, the scales of the battle's balance would be tipped, and there would be no way to restore them. But again, Hansen did not feel right in simply abandoning the fight. As he saw the snake about to be killed by the fairy, he gritted his teeth and ran towards the horrible energy that approached. If he could slow its advance for a while, and allow the fairy to finish off the snake, he might have a chance. 
The armored phantom did not allow its foe to leave so suddenly, and it pursued him. As he continued to evade, Hansen did not halt in his race towards the ghastly energy. After skipping past fifteen buildings, he came to a long staircase that reached for the skies. At its top, a larger palace rested. On the stairs, an elegant woman gently descended. Her body was incredible, and she was around a foot taller than Hans Senator still. Her scaling was perfect. Her long legs led to a slim waist, which acted as a pedestal for the grand boobs that lay above. In the black armor she was robed in, she exuded a presence of power and respect. She was like a panther, a female feline that was both beautiful and cruel. That is the spirit of the shelter? Hansen now revised his earlier thoughts, when he had believed that the armored phantom was the spirit of the shelter. The spirit looked at Hansen coldly. Her eyes were chilling, with her long black hair that flowed down to the ground. She gave Hansen a murderous gaze. The spirit was dressed in armor, but she wore no helmet. Atop her head rested a crown. She wielded no weapons, either, but her pretty white hands gave out a feeling of lethality. I have to somehow hold on and keep her busy until the fairy is done with the snake. Hansen gritted his teeth. He did not wait for the spirit to descend the stairs but raced up towards her instead. He had just finished enhancing his Dong Shen aura, so his abilities of perception had greatly improved. With the grace of movement gifted by Dong Shen powers, he believed he could kite two super creatures for some amount of time. The armored phantom was still on Han Sen's heels, and the way it moved now seemed angry. It seemed displeased at its opponent's decision to disrespect the spirit that was descending, and so it swung its sword with far greater aggression. Han Sen made use of his Dong Shen movements and pushed them to the max. This way, it was difficult for the phantom to strike him. After walking a few hundred steps, the spirit looked at Hans and with much disgust and disdain as she stepped down to meet him. She raised her fist and attempted to punch her incoming aggressor. It didn't seem as if she exerted much strength, but its speed was as if her fist had teleported. It suddenly collided with Hans Sen's belly. Pang! Hans Sen's body rocketed all the way back down the stairs like a meteor. He smacked into the roof of a building, which ruined its delicate tiling. The armor on Hans Sen's armor had many cracks upon it, and there was now an exposed area. Hansen removed himself from the rooftop with a mouthful of blood. The spirit's punch was not one that could miss, but it happened so suddenly he didn't have what it took to dodge. Fortunately, Hansen was fast, and the power she used was clearly not at max capacity. His armor would have entirely been destroyed if she had used more force, he imagined. The armored phantom jumped down from the stairs, slashing at Hansen with the green light greatsword. Stepping quickly, Hansen was able to dodge the attack. His eyes drifted towards the spirit. She was so fast, he'd have to keep an eye on her. If she was to attack him again, he would have no chance of dodging. Hansen's senses were powerful, though, and he could predict when she planned to make a move. Now was the time for Hansen to properly test what he had recently spent much time practicing. The spirit looked at Hansen and raised her fist. She fired it in his direction. The moment she swung her fist, it accelerated. Han Sen's eyes were not able to perceive how she performed this attack, but her entire body seemed to teleport directly before him. His excellent senses were indeed able to capture the granular details of her movements. With a move of his leg, he slid his body slightly to the side and dodged her attack successfully. The spirit, seeing her fist miss its target, looked shocked. In this small moment, Hansen swung his own fist at the spirit's belly in a form of payback. But the spirit's body just disappeared as if it had teleported away. His fist was so close, but it missed. 